Deep within the Blood God's domain, those who wish to please their patron journey to the Crucible, a gladiatorial arena built for one singular purpose. Wreathed in flame and flowing with unholy energies fed directly from the warp, it will be the site of another awesome 2v2 on Warhammer 3, this time in veneration to Karnath, the Hunter of Souls. On one side, the armies of Chaos, led by the Gore Queen and a horde of Norskin monstrosities. On the other, the Ogres and the Greenskins bringing out their biggest guns. It's a 2v2 on another gorgeous custom map by Shroom, as Chaos and Destruction rear their ugly heads and assert their dominance in the only way they know how. Fisticuffs. Let's get it poppin'. As we know, Korn favors the practice of winnowing, separating the weak from the strong in his blood games, and the Crucible is one of his favored venues, branded with his mark in the center of the arena. Demonic portals edge the outer walls, and all three VPs will be contested. There is no natural that teams can easily secure without a fight. So with that in mind, on the side of destruction, Flying Taco and Gojira are teaming up, and in Goji's infinite wisdom, he selected the only Greenskins banner that looks like Korn. Tusk Suns with their yellow icon on a sea of red, link it up with Flying Taco's blue shark tooth tribe. The Sky Striders, Albino Rhinos, Iron Guts, and Iron Blaster, and Grease's Gold Tooth, which has been his go to faction over the last several weeks. The Greenskins have the Big Gun Rogue Idol and Warzag the Great Green Prophet. Across the arena come the armies of Norska and Korn, Wolfric the Wanderer on his Woolly Mammoth, and Valky the Bloody on Gossamer Wings. Very elite armies for all four players to start getting kicked off with their most expensive troops so they don't have to reinforce with them. Skull Crushers, Exalted Bloodletters, Broader Champions, and a Fimir Bale Fiend of the Lore of Fire. Not a lot of opportunities for flanking on the Crucible. Korn does not appreciate those who are brutally cunning. It's not to the extent that he appreciates a straight up fight, and that is how this will be served today. Hot and steamy, in the sensor, up close and personal, warm and wriggling. Starting to sound a lot like Slim Nash. And because all three VPs are contested heavily, expect to see a lot of dead bodies on both sides. Not a lot of offensive magic that can just utterly decimate entire armies, though. No foot of Gork, no burning head, no flame storm, no piercing bolts of burning. But what there is a lot of is a lot of artillery. The big gun rogue idol can throw boulders from downtown. And of course, that iron blaster is a big threat to the skull crusher single entities and any elite infantry moving up in the middle. So, Rogue Idol will strike first blood. Really nice shot from across the beaten zone, landing some good ones into the middle of the Exalted Bloodletters. They will have to retreat if they don't want to keep losing models. Chaos Spawn looking <laughs> janky as all hell. And Corn Halberd is moving up to contest point number one, which is already in the control of the Tusk Suns. Valky the Bloody coming down and the spear Slopnir ripping in from the flank. And I must say that that was underwhelming. I was a little bit surprised how little damage that did. I usually see infantry formations at least drop a third of their health when Slopnir sunders the earth beneath their feet. But for tightly packed infantry and stuff like Dread Spears, it can almost one shot them. So only 900 damage, lesson learned, I guess. Don't use it on big guns and their loose formation, or at least not until they pile into combat. Warzag tried to catch Valky the Bloody out with Effigy of the Git. Stone Trolls were following up close behind. Could have gotten kind of dangerous for her, but she took off into the sky just in time. Now, Corn Halberds are an ideal unit for the situation. Obviously, you don't really need them fighting Noblars, but they should be able to hold the line. No problem there. Of course, little green guys, not the biggest, scariest things in the world. But against the combination of Big Guns and Stone Trolls, having those Halberds in the front line, extremely useful, especially when they're backed up by Chaos Spawn. Los Effects, the Demon Head activated to give Valkyrie the Bloody invulnerability for the next 12 seconds while Wurzag retreats and looks for an opportunity to cast some more brain bursts and big old spells in the center of everything. Flesh Hounds and Skull Crushers barely moving around the edges of the map. We will have a little bit of opportunity for flanking here, but the Greenskins could plug that gap if they so wish with Black Orcs that are coming out of spawn right now. All the action is taking place over point number one for the moment. Big Gun, Stone Trolls, Skull Crushers, Flesh Hounds, Chaos Spawn, and Corn Halberds going at it. And Corn is absolutely loving the spectacle already. This is exactly what the Blood God ordered for his late night programming. And things are really about to get kicked off over the contested point number two in the middle of the map. Lead Belchers are letting loose with their volleys and they'll force Norska to descend into the Blood Pool where they will be exposed to withering fire from Ogre Artillery. Doesn't seem like the Lead Belcher is positioned quite yet, 
to fire into the middle. Skin wolves are being sent flying. Gigantic mass difference between ogre bulls and skin wolves for whatever reason. Skin wolves kind of have the minotaur problem. Al Gore bull going flying to the moon. We've seen that many times in the past, but skin wolves will be able to beat ogres no problem in a straight up fight. These are an armored variant. They have a huge bonus versus large, but if they're surrounded by saber tusk pack coming out of spawn, that might make things more difficult for them. Valkia in the vanguard pushing through and chasing after the stone trolls and black ores who have had their fill of this mindless violence. They want no more part of it. They've become pacifists now and Valkia is going to have absolutely none of it. Spear Slopnir impaling a few unfortunate black orcs and she will begin styling Exalted Bloodletters directly behind her. And this is exactly what you want to see from Korn. When you get your elite armor piercing troops on top of elite infantry like Black Orcs, it's Value City and Valkia will feast. I love her animation sets and it's incredible. But the thing is, the big on Rogue Idols already landed some really good boulders in and amongst the Exalted Bloodletters. And that means that the value is actually in favor of the Tusk Sons at the moment. They're at 2,000 while Korn is at 1600. Flying Taco in the lead, mostly due to his artillery, lead belchers, and iron blasters, landing some pretty nasty shots in and amongst the elite of Korn and Norska. So while the Gore Queen takes the reins on this side of the battlefield and continues her styling on the Black Orcs, some headbutts coming in from where's that to Great Green Prophet and to Big Un Rogue Idol stomping his way over. He's now out of ammunition will not be able to throw any more boulders this game. Wolfric the Wanderer has his own set of things to worry about in the middle of the map. And as Lead Belchers continue the Torrents of Fire in the center, and Iron Guts charge into the midst of the Marauder Champions, we've got a really interesting battle brewing here. Now, Wolfric, he's not actually gonna be that great against the Ogres, unfortunately. Ogre Bulls and the Iron Guts simply don't care about the Mammoth's bonus versus infantry, and he's a big old target for that Iron Blaster, so he may have to be careful here. If I'm flying Taco, I'm probably sending my single entity artillery to blast that Mammoth apart and make it easier for Greasis to take control of the center of the map. Burning Head from the Fimir Balefiend. For some reason, I didn't think he had AoE wave clear this game. He does. There were a lot of monsters of infantry in that fight, so it wasn't that super useful. Demon Shield activated for the second time this battle, and Valkia has, and she's up to 150 kills already, and huge value. She's been killing stone trolls, black orcs. She's been beasting it up thus far. Really good showing from the Gore Queen up to this point. Now, there has not been a lot of fighting over point number three, and in fact, the VPs are 621 to 84. Korn and Norska have had big map control for most of this battle. You can see that Greenskins have been pushed off entirely from point number one. A lot more contention over the center of the map, though. Iron Guts trying to get a full surround off on the Mammoth and backed up by Grease's Goldtooth with that innate 10% ward save in an AoE. Potentially could be a fight they want to take. Greasus does not mind fighting Wolfric. As good as a duelist as he is, Greasus does have that large innate BVL, so could do a lot of damage to him. There are Skin Wolves there, though, and Greasus is dropping pretty fast on the right side of your screen. Wolfric is also down to half HP, and the Sky Striders are continuing to hang around. Now, this is interesting. Looking back on it, I was thinking maybe I should have taken this fight, have the Flesh Hounds absorb the charge of the Sky Striders. They would die. They'd do a little bit of damage back, though, but then that would allow my Skull Crushers to come in and finish off the Rhinos, and those combined potentially could have made a play there. I decided to be a little bit more conservative. Effigy of Degit, I wasn't sure if it was off cooldown or not. It had just been used on Valkia, so I think I could have gotten in without my charge being interrupted. Downside being, of course, that you're then kind of fighting on their side of the map and Saber Tusks and more stuff could have piled in and made that difficult. So maybe it was the right call to retreat, but did take a volley on the retreat. Kind of wish I had been more aggressive there because Valky the Bloody was there too. And I think those combined could have taken down the Sky Striders. We're now going directly for Wolfric the Wanderer, and he is in a bad spot. It's the Ice Age up in here. We're into the Pleistocene epic. Wooly Rhinos versus Wooly Mammoths. Manny the Mammoth has to run away while the Stone Trolls beat down the remnants of the Corn Halberds over on point number one. And this is one of the things that I really like about Domination. There's these kind of natural ebbs and flows where if you overcommit, 
suddenly a new wave of reinforcements come out from your opponent and they're able to take back ground they had already lost. You don't typically see that kind of stuff in land battle, which obviously has its own set of advantages over domination mode, but especially in these 2v2s get really epic and a lot of really interesting pushes back and forth to take control of the map. And as Furies descend on the Iron Blaster to try to silence it, they don't seem to be attacking it for the moment. Well, the Greenskins and the Tusk Suns are looking to make another push towards objective number one, and in fact have just capped it, and they better start capping. Because so far, they're doing great on value trading. Flying Taco is well ahead of everybody else. He's almost double in favor of literally every other army in the game. He's at 10,000 damage value, while everyone else is around 5,000 to 6,000. With that said though, they have not been capturing points and this is the Indie Pride Syndrome. I usually do really well in terms of value trading in Warhammer 3 Domination Mode. I typically don't do a very good job of actually capturing points and then I just run out of time. So the Tusk Sons and the Shark Tooth Tribe need to start working on capturing objectives because otherwise this is gonna just be a romp and stomp in favor of Chaos. Despite the fact that Taco has done a really good job of killing off a lot of these skin wolves and dealing great damage to Wolfric the Wanderer and his war mammoth. Sky Strider, albino rhinos in the vanguard, closely supported by Grease's Goldtooth, who is on slivers of health remaining. He does have a slaughter master nearby, or butcher rather, so maybe a troll guts will go his way, but he might be saving that wins of magic for something more important. I'm not sure he really needs Grease's to be doing a whole lot in these fights at this point. The Mammoth cannot be healed, and he could probably shoot it down with Knobbar Trappers and Lead Belchers, especially with the Iron Blaster. The damage against single entities is not something the Ogres lack at the moment, but Corn, maybe so. Horn of Corn, plus 24 melee attack in an AoE to try to turn this back in their favor, but the big on Rogue Idol is a serious issue right now, and his Halberds and the Skull Crushers of Corn pile in to base contact and try to take down the monstrosity. The Greenskins are throwing everything they can onto objective number one to retain it and keep it in their control. Big charge from the Woolly Rhinos. Smearing Marauders in the center and the Ogres look like they are about to capture objective number two as well. Point number three has gone back in favor of Chaos. So a single cap for Chaos at the moment, but Korn is actually taking objective number one. So it's gonna be a double cap now in favor of chaos how quickly the tides change how quickly the turn tables yeah there's not a lot of infantry here behind the rogue idol just a couple of big it's a unit of big guns and that's pretty much it so corn looking pretty strong here at the moment that has been the third push first it was in favor of the blood god then it went to the tusk sons and now back in favor of corn who have flesh hounds and skull crushers pushing all the way through and looking to get the green skins off of the point entirely. Valkia looking to chase after the Iron Blaster, which has not fired that much of its ammunition. I think the line of sight divots, hills, and all those different little ravines have caused some issues for the Lead Belcher. I, dude, Lead Belcher, Iron Blaster, I hate the naming conventions for them. They're so annoying. It's an Iron Blaster. Very difficult for it to fire. And I'm not sure I agree with this play from Flying Taco at all. They need infantry. They need stuff to capture points right now. So two Knobbar Scrap Launchers, while again, will continue pushing that value trading in their favor. At some point, you need to stop worrying about value trading, start worrying about actually taking objectives as Skin Wolves are sent flying down the mountainside and I half expected them to die from fall damage here. That was insane. A dog person living up to his name with the Wombo combo, the Happy Feet, the Dead Ape Falco, and Skin Wolves and Beasts of Tashnar bonus for large combo to deal with the bulls over on objective number three. And that might swing in favor if he can get a few more infantry over there, as well as like some marauders are being sent out that way. Valkia, up to 150 kills, really nice damage value as well, going after the big on Rogue Idol and might be able to start chunking this thing down, especially if she can get the halberds around in front. That's why the Skull Crushers are coming to lend their mass, their speed, and their power to taking down the Avatar of Gork and possibly Mork. But Flying Taco's been pretty conservative with the Sky Striders thus far. Hasn't really sent them into too many danger situations, but now he's going to. He's gonna go up against Skin Wolves, the armored variant, and a preemptive troll guts to ensure they don't start losing models. Really nice support ability. Big time heal there. And with Ogre Bulls with Iron Fist piling into the engagement, 
that should go heavily in favor of the ogre kingdoms now over on point number one the forces of chaos are thinking about making their last stand valkia is going to lead some flesh hounds and perhaps the skull crushers over to help deal with the sky stratters but the remnants of the infantry are going to try to keep the greenskins off of objective number one and try to retain that single cap big hammer and anvil pinning the sky striders in place and a sword of corn about to do not a whole lot i was a little bit surprised about that now the sword of corn of course is usually used for massed infantry formations i thought it would do more to the woolly rhinos and the ogre bulls and everything that was pinned in place there didn't even do a whole lot of damage to saber tusk actually and so mostly a wasted ability there but not a whole lot to be saving your army abilities for at this point anyway ogre bull sky striders the saber tusk pack and the butcher just overwhelming the skin wolves and a lot of the norskin troops here so corn halberds piling in but perhaps they should not have been sent this far because they might be needed on the point because there's a big value trade lead in favor of the forces of destruction ogres and greenskins are leading pretty heavily on that front and so if they're able to sweep the map table their opponents and triple cap this could be over despite the fact that the capture point is 1428 to 634 in favor of chaos which is why they're not going to swing everything they possibly can over to objective number one which will now become the focal point of the entire battle and that is why wolfric the wanderer is here that is why marauder horsemen the beasts of tashnar and all these fast movers are piling onto the point because whoever controls this is going to win the game i don't know that chaos has enough left to break a triple cap if they do indeed get triple capped here but if they're able to prevent it from ever happening in the first place they might be able to hold on and you can see the flesh hounds are preventing a lot of the infantry from getting on the objective burning head trying to clear out whatever knoblars and ogre bulls are in there that leadership penalty that burnt contact effect causing some ogre bulls to start breaking off and wolfric is still beasting it up there on top of his war mammoth stone trolls piling in chaos spawn marauders everything on the map is literally just going to conglomerate onto a single objective and they're just going to brawl it out and corn is cackling up in the heavens in the realms of chaos he is loving this show the big on rogue idol is still alive and it's gonna go the way of chaos and yes it was a big lead in terms of vps but i think if the ogres and greenskins secure the triple cap there and then continue feeding in low tier fodder and ogre bulls onto that point i'm not sure chaos recovers there so the fact that they were able to make that really intelligent push and just pile everything in there well that was dog person's call and he made the right one for sure because if we hadn't done that we'd probably lose that game valkia was a beast wolfric the wanderer perhaps even more so on his war mammoth over 2000 damage value the skin wolves build was really cool love seeing those units they're one of my favorites in the norskin roster absolutely awesome though they didn't have as good a time this game as i would have expected 1300 value is really good on one of them but the other is perhaps a little bit underperformed but i think flying taco being the caliber player that he is he's just hard to deal with for sure and he did bring a lot of range troops and kind of sit back and focus on the value trading which was really good to an extent but i think it also kind of made them focus too much on that and not enough on capturing and i think the knobbar scrap launchers were kind of the wrong call in terms of reinforcements i think he just needed more bulls on the field more knoblars to just start swarming points i don't think there's a good chance they win if he focuses more on that way because they were up pretty heavily in terms of the trades a lot of back and forth in that one a lot of really cool units coming out some nice plays on both sides hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you all in the next one gg to the homies